All right, we're coming up to Thanksgiving weekend, and this is Cameron's Main Central Lower Road. I'm trying something new here, a new camera stabilizer, a, which I'm not using right now. i uh, going to use a tripod. I'm going to do multiple uh, segments, and then I'm going to use iMovie to put it all together and give you a nice long video. It's been a while since I posted something on uh, YouTube, but hopefully this one will come out nice. And uh, if it does, I'll probably do this more and just basically use it to explain the operations. But today, what we're going to look at is a day in Brunswick Yard. And we're going to see the locals come in, the uh, freights that uh, come through, and uh, just watch the action. And I hope you enjoy it. These are the waybills I use, and this is the waybill rack I've built on the upper level so I can hold these waybills and sort them so when I come into a Brunswick yard, I can actually uh, figure out what cars are where in the train, and it's just, you're looking straight at it and looking down at the cars in the train. Uh, everywhere where there's some place you have to switch, I have these mounted along the upper level fascias to allow easy of it, because rather than having a uh, drop down flat spot or something like that, these, these hold them very nicely. And it's basically just trim you can buy at the uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, that uh, you can just screw it to the face here. Yeah. 
We're now breaking the train and drop, doing our drop off with RS1. These are cars headed for Lewiston, Lower, and the Rockland branch. Now I gotta come pick up our cut of cars that are going to Waterville direction. Two gondolas in the front of this train are full of limestone rock and that goes up to a paper mill so they can crush it and make uh, acid, or to neutralize acid, excuse me.
Once our air pressure is up, then we will take our train and start heading towards Waterville. We wave at the agent operator as we go by the Brunswick Yard office. Train RS1 will work its way all the way up the lower road up to Augusta where it will uh, turn and become SR2 heading back to Rigby. This job was done each day, Monday through Saturday in the 70s. The next train, train due into Brunswick is the Lewiston Lower Turn, and, and right after that, or during this time, we may see the uh, Rockland train come in also. They are coming in to exchange cars and get uh, loads or cars back going down the branch. So they come in here, they uh, drop off the outbound, and then pick up their inbound cars. The Lewiston Lower Turn comes into the uh, West Yard, and he will stop at agent operator's building to uh, determine where to drop his cars and where to pick up and if the agent operator wants him to do any kind of switching while he's in the yard here before he goes back out. These two locomotives don't have sound. After talking with the agent operator, the turn is going to drop his cars on track 8 and then he will pick up his cars off of track 12 going back to Lewiston. There are cars that are out of order in his train and SR2 coming back from Augusta will have a, a long schedule so he will have him sort the cars for either Rigby or Waterville bound. So track 8 and track 10, track 8 is where the train is going on right now, are the longest tracks in this yard. So this is usually where the uh, Waterville and Rigby cars are lined up because they are significantly uh, longer sets than the uh, ones going to the branches. Five sixty-seven will run around his train to the back to the east end of the yard and do his uh, sorting of his train. He's going to take his caboose and set that on track 12 to get it out of the way while he sorts cars.
So looking at the car cars from train 567, the uh, Lewiston turn that came into the yard, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars that had to be sorted out going to Rigby. And then the rest of the cars are either headed to Waterville or on a uh, uh, Waterville route, except for one car, which is a pulpwood car that will be going to Rockland. So there's cars that are going to Rigby are going to be sorted on the track eight. Cars that are going to Waterville will be sorted on track 10. And then we will take the Rockland car and put that on the Rockland track right now, which is track 12. And that train should be in here shortly. Now this yard has a basically a dip in the middle of it. So if I take and uncouple the cars before I start heading down to the uh, tracks I'm going to be going into at a certain point they will gravity down to the center of the uh, the yard.
remainder of these cars are going to be going to red blue. Now we have to uh, collect our lowest and lower cars, which are on track 14, and we'll couple them on our caboose, and I can hear that the uh, Rockland turn is coming in, so we'll uh, let him clear on the siding, and then we'll pull out of town. We have a fairly short six car train going back to Lewis and Lower today. This pulpit car, I don't know if you noticed when I was switching, I didn't have a, I hadn't set my uh, caboose on a track that I should have because that had the Lewis, uh, the, excuse me, the Rockland cars on it, along with the other track, but the other track also had my cars on it, so I'm having to do an extra move here now to get this car off my train and into the track where he will be going to where he's needed. up on our train and run the air up and the Rockland train is coming into the yard here and we'll uh, turn around and see if we can get a shot of that while we're doing the air test on the Lewis Camilla train. comes the Rockland train. He's come off the Rockland branch, which uh, had a terminus in Rockland, Maine. very scenic portion of the main central that ran along the coast from uh, Brunswick to Rockland.
And basically he's going to clear out here and uh, then we're going to have the Lewis and Lower train will head back to Lewis and Lower. Let the conductor talk to the odd operator and get his instructions. Now the Lewis and Lower train is going to leave the yard and head back to Lewis and Lower. So the Rockland train, he's gonna drop his cars on track eight if there's enough room for the whole train. If not, he'll drop them on eight and 10. And he actually has to take his cars off of tracks 12 and 14 because they had to split the train up or the cars up when they were sorting them from other trains. We'll go to the other in the yard and clear the switch. He's going to drop his caboose on the number four track, which is the siding, and then do his sorting the cars and dropping off from this end. And he'll run around the yard and pick up his uh, train back onto his caboose, and uh, he'll head back to Rockland. Brickman had a great idea. Rather than putting the caboose on the siding, they're going to put it on the back end of the train, which is going to be on track 10. And then they will run around their train, pick up the cars on track 12, and then they'll be all set to uh, head out of town.
pick up our first set of cars. You notice I don't use the bell all that much because after a while it gets quite annoying. I can't imagine actually running one of these things and listening to a bell if you had to run a lot in the yard. This will almost finish our train washing for today. The, the, the Rockland Branch train has already tested his air brakes and he's ready to go, but we do have BR4, which is the Bang Border Rigby trait. It'll be coming through shortly and he is going to have to pick up some of these cars coming out of Brunswick because SR2 is fully loaded coming down from Augusta. So on the Rockland branch, there is the shipyard. There was a Thomaston uh, cement plant. There's a lot of business at the end of the Rockland branch for basically sardines and factories, and they'd send tank cars down there to uh, get fish oil. The uh, cement plant would get coal and obviously cement out, and the shipyard would get structural steel, and I'm simulating on that flat car that just went by, a shaft for a ship. Here's BR4 coming around the curve. In reality, it's straight to the next yard, but uh, I don't know how she had to put a curve in there. And he's going to use a crossover because he's going to come onto the siding here and uh, exchange cars or drop, pull these cars from track eight. He has his instructions from the yard office, and off he goes. Now, I love the sound effects on this U18B, so I have quite a few of them. And also, the U25Bs had a pretty good chortle to them, but uh, the U18Bs were rather unique. So I'm filming this using a tripod and I have a uh, motion control device that I got for Christmas, a little early, but 
was intended to be a Christmas present to uh, do this filming. And then, as you're going to realize, obviously I'm going to get this. I'm using iMovie and trying to cut all these pieces that I had to film into one movie or one video. I'm just not sure how long it's going to take me to edit all this into one video. I'm about uh, an hour and a quarter in here already uh, taping. But I'm getting some operations in. All right, we're going to set up for another angle. These locomotives that I'm using here are Atlas GP38 and Atlas GP7. I really like their older uh, classy GP7s. They had a lot of weight. They can pull. Same thing with the GP38s. I haven't had a GP38 with their newer sound installed or anything like that. And then these U18Bs are obviously under mountain, but they're actually very good pulling car train or engines also. But we'll see how good this one can do because we're going to have a pretty long train going up the grade the hillside. BL4 did not typically pick up cars in Brunswick that did it. And Cameron's main is a lower road. It is a uh, job for the BL4 RD trains that they come through. The balance of cars and the layout to get the operations in all the uh, areas requires that because the RS2 or RS1 SR2 trains don't have enough uh, length to uh, do all the cars going the different branches and industries. So you hear that grinding sound, that's an axle on one of these freight cars. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm sure I've gotten some dust or dirt in here when I was weathering it, so I'm thinking it's one of these covered hoppers. All right, we're gonna head up the grade to Hillside. Now, I have the grade up there for specifically so that if we get too many uh, cars in the train and need a helper, then or to double the train, we have to do that because in reality, that occasionally happens on the main central. I'm going to swing us over and we'll see what happens with this motion control camera as it tries to focus on the area I left it at. And it's trying to follow it, trying to follow it. Now it's going to come over here and we'll see it going up the hillside. I don't know how long this train is. Let me see.
35 cars. And that's a 2.5% grade going up to the uh, top where Hillside Siding is. And this will be the end of this video. I'm trying new things. New camera that's got uh, motion control. I'm going to try using the, uh, or not try, I'm going to use the iMovie to put it all together and put subtitles and stuff. And uh, combine a lot of uh, videos that I did here into this one big video. And I hope you enjoy it. And it is pulling those 35 cars up that grade. Gotta love those engines. They've got some good pulling power for a model. And my cars are not light by any means. I weigh them to the NMRI standard or sometimes some of them are even more than that. Right, we're saying goodbye from the main central lower road.